friends. Welcome. So I'm really excited to get started today. Today we're going to be making two different um, air dry clay trinket dishes. Uh, so we don't need to see you as long as you can see us. You're going to see me for a little bit and then you're going to see um, you're going to see my overhead camera and what you're supposed to be doing and what you can be doing. So we're going to be using air dry clay. And we're going to be creating these. So we have the two different trinket dishes today. So we have this one, which is going to be our round trinket dish. And then we are going to do one that's a little more rectangle, a little more oval. Um, I'm going to kind of be following similar to what the samples are, a little bit different. I'm going to show you a couple different techniques and different things that we're going to do today. But if you guys are ready, we can get started and then go over our um, all of our supplies that we have. So I'm gonna keep these up here so you can see what our samples are. So if you wanna do something exactly like these, that's absolutely fine. If you do something a little bit different, that's great too. The more creative that you wanna be is, you know, that's the best part about art. You can just be as creative as possible. So let's talk about some of the supplies that we're gonna need. The most important thing that we are going to need to get started with is air dry clay. So this is the one I'm using. This is our um, our soft air dry clay pack that we have in the Camp Creatology section at Michael's. It has 12 pieces and they're all different colors. So if you have one of these, that's perfect. If you do not have one of these, that's great too. Um, you can use um, any of the different ones we have. We have some bigger packs that have just solid colors. We have some of the really big ones that have a couple different colors, white, red, yellow, and I believe blue. And then there's, of course, the different ones that you can get that are just the buckets of the different air dry clay. But as long as you have some kind of air dry clay, you're going to be good. If you um, don't have air dry clay but want to practice making these, you could also use some any kind of Play-Doh or dough or anything like that. But I'm going to be using the air dry clay. Um, we are going to be painting one of them. We're going to paint the rectangle one today. So I have our acrylic paint set. Also from Michaels, this is our Creatology one. Any acrylic paint is fine. This one's just really nice because it is um, washable. So it has all the different colors. So we are gonna pull that out here in a little bit. And of course, if you're gonna be using paint, you have to have some paint brushes. So this is the set that we're using. This is the set, the Creatology set with the metallic um, handles. So this is a great set. It has all different sizes. And in fact, all of our camp creatology classes that we are doing over the, um, from last week and in the next three weeks can use these. And then something that is not going to be probably on your list is something to put the paint on. We're going to be using a couple different colors. So if you have a paint palette like this, that's great. I'll probably be using this. You also could use a paper plate or a paper towel or some scratch paper, anything like that, that you can put paint on and then dip out of. If you are not worried, if you are using this paint, you can also dip right out of the tubs, but just to avoid mixing the colors, um, anytime using something like this is always great. And then a couple of like other items that are helpful. I have a cup of water so I can wash my brush in between. And then I also have some paper towels here. So paper towels, napkins, wet wipes, anything like that. You're welcome also to take a second and walk to the sink if you do get paint on your hands or if you want to wash. I'll go nice and slow. So if you do need to walk away or if you have a grown up there that can help you out with that, that's even better. Um, so with all of our supplies and all the things that we have, I think we are ready to go ahead and get started. So we're going to get started with the one that we need a little more time with. So we're going to put the round one aside and we're going to work on the rectangle. So for the rectangle, in terms of having this big old set of clay, the thing is that we have 12 different colors, and um, but there's none of the same. And you actually need about three of these little packs of clay to be able to create each of these. So because we're going to paint this one, I'm going to find the three colors that are going to be the easiest to paint this one red. You do not have to paint it. You are welcome to leave it the colors that you choose. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different techniques on both of them. So you can absolutely choose whichever one that you want. Um, if you have a different one and a, maybe a larger thing of clay, you can actually absolutely do the same one. When this one was first created, it was using just solid white. 
Um, but I do want to be able to show you how to mix three colors to have something that is going to be workable to be able to create something like this. So three of these are perfect. So I think we're going to use a red since we're gonna paint red. We can go ahead and get a red one. And then the closest colors that we have to red obviously are going to be this light pink and also this darker pink, which is kind of a magenta color. So I'm gonna mix these three colors together to be able to have a really good foundation to paint this on. So I'm going to use these three. You have all different options. If you do not want to paint it, that is fine, once again. And then when you paint it, you do not have to paint it red. This is going to be your trinket dish, so you can paint whatever color you want. If you wanted it to be black, you could do it black. If you want it to be rainbow, it can be rainbow. If you want it to be camouflage, it can be camouflage. It is yours. Maybe you want to gift one of these trinket dishes to a friend or a family member. You can do it in their favorite color, anything like that. The things that we're painting today, so this is going to look, this is shaped like a cassette tape. And I know most of our friends here are probably a little bit too young to have ever used a cassette tape, but you might have a grown up there that is very familiar with these. So that's kind of the shape of this is looking like a cassette tape. And then this, you can make it look like a record or you can make it look like whatever, but we're just gonna do kind of something simple. So first things first, we're gonna take our clay and we're gonna pick the first color and we are just gonna massage it in our hands for just a few seconds. That helps get some of the bubbles out and it helps it to be a little more pliable and easier to use. So just grab that clay and just work it for just a few seconds. We're gonna do that with all three of our colors. So our red is ready to go. Now I'm gonna work on this light pink. I wanna know what colors you guys are using. So you can throw that in the, in the questions. So I wanna know. A cassette tape is a, um, it is a little device that back in the 70s and 80s, and 90s, we listen to music on. So now you may have, um, you may be able just to play your music right off of a phone or a tablet or something like that, but we had to use cassette tapes. So it was a little piece of plastic and there was a machine that you would play it on and we would put the tape right inside and click it shut and it would spin these two little things around and inside there was a little piece of plastic that would play and would make music. So I would say you should have your grown up help you look up what a cassette tape looks like and how it worked. It was really, really neat, but you don't see them too often now. Mainly you would see them in something that was, you know, considered retro. So we have some really great colors. I see red. Marble with teal, orange, and pink. I love marble. When we do our round ones, I'm actually going to do a marble. I'm really excited. Blue and white. Those are great colors. So as we've been talking, we've just been getting these three pieces of clay ready. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to kind of show you guys just a little bit of a marbling technique, but then I'm going to end up mixing them together. But just so for you guys that are marbling, you can be prepared. So I've taken my first piece of clay and we'll do it again. And you're just gonna rub it through your hands and we're gonna try to get it into as much of a ball as you can. So just keep rolling it right there in between your hands. You can do that with your second one. Make it a nice ball. Get all of the little cracks and everything out of it. You know, when I, seen, I saw that question about a cassette tape, I was like, oh my gosh, I, that has really truly aged me. Right. <laughs> that was, I'm like, back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, that is what we did. 
If you don't have clay or Play-Doh right now, you might just want to watch and see what we do and then follow along. Um, any kind of clay will work. And there are some air, there are non-air dry clays that will work as well. Um, but there are some really great recipes online that you can actually um, create your own air dry type clay using some materials in your kitchen. But I am not going um, to do it today because I don't have the supplies. But if you want to do it. All right. Purple and blue. If you want to do your shapes, your own shapes, that's awesome. More power to you. I want to see you guys get creative. And thank you for saying that. That's very nice. Okay, so now that we have our balls, we're going to start rolling them out. Just going to rub them together. Just to kind of make this a little bit of a longer, uh, almost kind of like a noodle or a hot dog. Make it a little bit longer. We're going to do that with all three. So you can just roll it right between Magenta is a little bit longer, but now that you have all three, if you want to do this, the marble look, you can just kind of take it and twist it. And then once you have that, then you're just going to go together. Roll it back into a ball. And then when you go flat, you're going to have kind of a marble camouflage look. And if you want to then keep going and keep twisting and keep twisting, you'll get these smaller marble looks. So I can show you that again, if we wanna take this and then just go right back into a longer one. And then you can fold it in half and then we're gonna do the same thing. And that's just gonna get more and more marbled. Oh, that is so sweet with the two heart halves. I love that. So you'll see they start to get a little bit more mixed together and a little bit more and more. Now, like I said, we're gonna paint this one. So I am going to go ahead, since we are going to paint it, I'm gonna just keep mixing until it is one solid color. If you wanna leave it marbled or leave it that camo look, that's absolutely great too, but I am gonna keep mixing this one now. And when I make this one, I'm going to leave it marbled. So you can see with the red and the two pinks that we're just kind of getting this kind of dusty red color. So I'm just going to keep mixing. All right. So now that I have a solid color or you guys maybe have a um, whatever color that you were ready to use, let's start making it into our shape. So I'm just going to go ahead once again and roll this into a ball. If you don't want to use just your hand, you can also use your paper. I have scratch paper. It's my favorite thing is always having some scratch paper so I don't mess up my table. And I know that your grown up will appreciate that as well. So we have a nice round ball, and this is gonna be the point where we're going to make our shape. So if you wanted to make it into a heart or um, a diamond or whatever, but like I said, we're just gonna do this nice rectangle to create the cassette tape. So we're just going to just slowly start making it until it kind of is like an egg. A little bit longer. So it's going to be a little bit of an oval or a little bit of a tube. And if you have tools like Play-Doh or clay tools and want to use those, that's great too. Then we're just going to start squishing it down. So you don't want it to be too flat. I'm doing the rectangle one first. So I'm doing this one first and then we'll do this one. Push that over. This is the one we're doing. So we don't want it to be too thin because we want it to be able to dry 
but we do want it to be thin enough that we're going to be able to make these lips. So if you can see the side, it is lifted up. So I'm just going to start forming my clay into a little bit of a rectangle shape or kind of a long oval. So we're going to do that first. We can smooth it out. And you can just use your thumb or one of your fingers and just start to make a little bit of a lip. Let me turn this sideways so y'all can see. So it's just going to be a little bit of a, of a lip. So when whoever is using this trinket dish lays something inside, it doesn't fall out. So we have one side, almost like a little wall. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other side. Just gonna lift it up. Everyone doing all right? Any questions as we do this? You are going to see if you're using the air dry clay, it does take quite a while for it to dry. It normally takes about 24 full hours for it to actually get hard, but we are going to go ahead and paint it and do all of the, uh, the little pieces on it while it still is kind of moist and that's not going to be a big deal at all. Okay, so you can see that we have four sides. It doesn't have to be perfect. I know if you've ever been on a video before with me, I will say that over and over and over again. Art is never perfect. Perfection is not what we're going for. We want to just be creative and use our imaginations and learn a new technique or two, but perfection is never what we are going for. The most important thing is that we have fun. As you can see, we're just working on that little bit of a lip. Looks like a bed. I definitely think you could lay someone inside of it. Maybe not this size, but if you had a little toy or a little doll, it just needs to have a little bit of room. If you have a grown up there, or if you know, if you're smart in your maths, about half an inch or three quarters of an inch is a really great height. Just to have that little bit. We want to have enough room that we are going to paint around the edges. So we do want to have just enough room to be able to do that. So now we have our little bit of a shape. It's kind of a nice long rectangle. you're doing a heart or some other shape, I wanna know how it's going. Are you figuring it out? I love a heart. So now we're going to paint part of this. I don't wanna paint, I'm going to leave some of it, um, but I wanna go ahead and do this middle long oval that's right here because I wanna give it a second to dry. So if you are going to be painting with me, this is the time. I'm pulling out my palette and I'm going to try to do it as close to the picture as possible. Of course, because this is a darker color and it's not white, this was painted on white, it's not going to be as vibrant. We're going to do what we can here. And I do want to give it a second to start drying. So I have my paints, any paints will do, any acrylic type paint, something like watercolor paint or um, uh, like uh, an oil paint, things like that probably won't work as well on this. Acrylic is really gonna be your best, um, but you can use whatever you have. So it doesn't have to be this particular one, just something that's gonna give a nice, a nice dry to it. But I know in the one that I did last week, I said, you can use watercolors or whatever. And that's just not the case with this one. It looks like a bathtub. I think that is exactly what it's supposed to look like. 
Okay, so we have a bunch of different brushes. I'm gonna use one that's a little bit smaller for the details. So I'm gonna use the yellow one, this yellow gold color, just to do the details. It doesn't have to be um, this one that you guys are using, but a little bit smaller is gonna be just a little bit easier for these details. So I am going to dip some yellow. These paints do come with the cover. I have used them all before, so they do get a little tacky. But we're just gonna take a little bit of our yellow and go ahead and put it on our palette. That way we can use what we use and we are not going to be muddying up the colors inside our paint. All right, friends, let's paint. So like I said, we're just doing this little oval. It's not gonna be quite as bright. So let's just see what we can do. If you wanted to do it in a black or a darker color. So I did mine that kind of looks like a red. Um, if you use lighter colors, it's definitely gonna be easier to paint over, but we're working with what we're working with. So we're gonna just go in and we're gonna paint this long oval also kind of the shape of a hot dog. And it kind of mimics the shape of the, the outside. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. So I'm gonna do my first coat and I'm gonna let it start drying because I'm going to do a couple of coats just to make sure that you can see that yellow. What I was doing right there was just dabbing to make sure that we had more paint on it. Can you see? Just doing a long oval. And this is just to create our cassette tape. I'm a little off center. But, you know, we'll talk about it over and over again. Our aim is not perfection. Our aim is fun. So these Creatology paints do dry pretty quick. If you have a fan or if you want to use some paper to help it dry even quicker, you absolutely can. But they do dry pretty quick. So I'm just gonna fan it for a second so I can add just a little more yellow. I'm gonna do as many layers as I can. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry for a second and then we'll come back and we're gonna add some more paint around the edges and then we're gonna do those outlines. But I do just wanna give it just a second. So we can have as bright of a yellow. If you did not wanna do the cassette tape shape, which is fine because I'm sure a lot of you don't even know what it is, um, and you wanted to add hearts or stars lightning bolts like this if you wanted to add polka dots or stripes all of that would look really really cool on a trinket dish you can make it look like tie-dye you have all the options in the world so i'm going to set my brush down for just a second and then i am going to let this dry and while this is drying and the um the air dry clay is drying a little bit and this yellow is drying a little bit so I can add another layer let's start working on our round one absolutely age is just a number whatever age you are I'm definitely older than 12 and I'm doing this any age whether you're three Nine, 10. Okay, we're gonna do the same steps. I have orange first. I'm just gonna start mixing it up. You guys have enough clay and wanna make a second one with me. If you don't have enough clay and you want to keep working on your first one, that is absolutely fine too. So got the first one, orange, which is my favorite color. This beautiful bright yellow. So I'm going to do that one next. It looks great on camera. It is almost neon. It is very pretty. Hey, Corinne, I'm just going to step in really quick. 
If anyone has any questions, definitely put them in the Q&A section. All mics are muted. So anytime you raise your hand, um, I you wouldn't be able to talk. So definitely put your questions in the Q&A section and we will be able to answer those questions uh, for you. Absolutely. I wanna see all the questions. I want to know where you guys are at and how you're doing and if there's any way that I can help you. So here we have our three colors. We're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna work on marbling. Make sure you have plenty of room. I'm using orange, yellow, and white this time. Are you gonna be able to make a second one with me or are you gonna be working on your first? Love to know. That helps me know how fast I need to go or if I need to slow down. We're gonna do what we did last time. I am actually doing this from um, our, um, our Michaels corporate. That's where I'm located. We are in Texas. You may hear a Texas accent. You're doing your second. I love it. I don't think we are doing polymer clay this go around only because when we are doing this with you, we're not going to be able to show you how to bake it. And polymer clay does need to be baked. Um, but there are some really um, great polymer clay at Michael's um, that you can get. And um, I think right now Michael's is actually running a clearance sale. So if you're watching with this with me today in June, you can do that. It's hard for you to copy the other half of your heart because you have the first side. I bet that is going to be really tricky. Keep working on it. Okay, so we have our three little circles. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to start making them into a little bit of longer ovals. I'm going to make these a little bit longer than the last time. And Georgia, welcome. They can be kind of costly. That's why we love a sale. Do love polymer clay though. You can use absolutely any color you want. The lighter colors are gonna be easier to paint. The darker colors are a little bit harder. It's why we're doing a lot of different layers on that. If you have multiple kinds of um, colors, that's why we're doing this because I don't have too many of them. Okay, so we did it a little bit longer this time because I am gonna leave it marbled. So you're gonna take your three, line them up. If you wanna do more than three, if you wanted to do six colors, you could do that as well. It'd be a little bit of a bigger dish, um, but you probably at that point would um, maybe not wanna do the entire package, maybe just part, maybe like, so if you did half, you could make half of one of these. You could add them and do six, six different lines, and then you would have enough to make two. We are doing the circle one now. We're just going to stretch it out and make that shape while the yellow on the rectangle dries. So I've just stretched it enough. So it's about the length of my arm. So it'll be, my arm is longer than your arm. So I would say about six to seven inches. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're just gonna twist. Kind of looks like a candy cane or definitely like a piece of candy on a lollipop. Then we're just gonna fold it in half. And then this is the fun part. You just squish it together. You can see the colors that are coming out on it. And roll it together. On this one, I am not going to paint it because I want my marbling to show. So it has two different sides. You can choose which side. So now that I've rolled it into a ball and flattened it out to be a nice circle. 
now is when we're going to start making the lips on this one as well. So same thing. You don't want it to be too thin because you want it to be able to hold things. But we're just going to start using our thumb and start creating a lip. So as you go, you can see what we're doing. You can absolutely start over. We're not going for, for perfection. Polymer clay is going to be with all of our clay supplies. It's going to be a little bit different than the air dry clay. Most of the air dry clay is going to be in our kids section in creatology, but polymer clay is going to be with the other stuff. There's a whole section at a lot of the Michaels that comes with the, um, the different clays. Not at all Michaels, but a lot of them. Okay. So how's it going? Y'all getting it? See, we're making a little bit of a lip, kind of like a bowl. Sometimes it's hard to see. It's nice and soft. So you can kind of move it around however you want. We're just gonna keep building up the walls of our trinket dish. So when you give this to whoever you give it to and they put, or for yourself, if you put rings or if you put keys or something in it, the lip helps it from falling out. It does keep going. I love the way the white and the orange and the yellow mix together. It looks like a fun planet or just like pure sunshine. It's great for summer. All right, can you see? Can you see the little sides with the lip? flat on the bottom, piece of dirt there. All right. The circle is definitely the easiest if you ask me. So you can make tons and tons of circles. You could start making them now and have enough Christmas gifts for all of your friends and family. Got some time. So we're just going to let this guy start to just dry and firm up a little bit before we paint something on top. And while it is doing that, let's go back to our rectangle. So I'm just going to do a little test. It's still a little bit wet. You can see right there. But not too bad at all. Got my paper towel. So if I get paint on my fingers, I can just wipe it right off. So I'm just gonna add one more layer to give it that nice bright yellow. There we go. So I'm done with this one now, I'm done with my yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop it into my water cup and let it start to clean. And then let's paint it. So if you're using white clay, this is the, the time that we're gonna paint the whole rest of it. So I have a little bit of a bigger brush. This is the one um, that is purple. And we have red paint because I am following the example. Um, like I said, you do not have to follow the example. You are welcome to get creative and paint however and whatever you would like. But I'm gonna follow the example and do the cassette tape. So I have my red, I'm gonna put it right here onto my palette. So whether you're using a palette or a, um, a paper towel or a scratch piece of paper or a paper plate, I'm just gonna load my brush up so it has quite a bit. And now we're gonna carefully start painting the whole rest of this rectangle. Um, so this part is probably the most tedious and we're just gonna be very careful as we paint to avoid that yellow. So that's the most important part. You can go around every little bit, but we're going to avoid that yellow opal. So I'm actually gonna come in first with the square top of the brush and I'm going to just 
carefully go around that long oval. So I'll get a little closer so you can see. Just carefully ride around. I could have done the yellow oval last, but this way I don't have to do red paint and then try to do yellow paint over it. If I did a lighter color on the back, if I did yellow on this side, I could definitely go over it with red and it wouldn't be as big of a deal, but yellow on top of red is a little bit harder. So then I'm gonna fill in the rest of the inside. all the way up onto the lips on the side, those ridges that we created to help collect the trinkets. Even better. We're gonna do all of the inside. Be careful because if you're using the air dry clay, it is still going to be a little bit pliable and movable. So we don't wanna mess up the shape that we've created. And we're gonna carefully turn it on to the side and we're gonna to start to paint our sides too. You're welcome to paint the bottom, but if you do paint the bottom and then you set it down, it might stick to the paper, which is not a bad thing. It will give you, also will give you a little bit of stability, but I am not gonna paint the bottom. But if you want your entire thing to be the same color, so because I'm not painting the bottom, I can actually hold it from the bottom and avoid um, having to wait for all the other sides to dry. So here we go. Nice and careful. If you get to a point where you're a little stuck, just feel free to ask me to go over something again. I do not mind. Or if you have a grown up there that can help you with some of these little more trickier parts, that's great too. Or maybe an older brother or sister or a friend or something. All right. So I've just about gotten all four of my sides painted. Fill in any extra little places. You can see now why I chose the colors I did. So it would be easy to cover with that red since I had that nice pink base. So there we go. Now I'm gonna carefully set that down. Do a little bit of paint on my fingers. So I'm just going to use my paper towel to wipe that off. And I am done with red. So into the cup. You can see my cup of water now has the two brushes. And I'm going to put this paint away. We are gonna need one more color for this one, but it's gonna be a darker color. So it can be black or dark blue or gray, but it will need to be a darker color that will show up on top of that red color. So I am going to use black. So once again, I'm going to find another brush. This time I'm going to use the red one. It does have an even thinner shape. Kind of see. And that's going to be perfect for going on the outsides. So it is drying pretty quickly. If you wanted to wash your first one, the one that had yellow, and reuse that one, you could do that as well. That one should be just about dry now. Just make sure that you wipe off any excess paint on 
paper towel or wipe or whatever you're using. So depending on what you have, paint palette. And I'm just gonna do a little dip of black. Not too much because we're just doing the edges. So if you do have the entire pack of clay, you could do this as many times as you wanted. There's only one other project that does take clay that we're doing at Camp Creatology this, this year for um, this summer. It is gonna be in our last week. We do use a little bit of clay for um, the project where we do the little planter. So you just need to save one thing, but then you can use the rest of it if you're gonna be doing that project. Okay, so now you see we have this one that's kind of shaped kind of like a pencil. It's a little bit of the tip. You can't see when I'm way up there, so I'll have to just move it down. So you can see that, and I'm just going to do a little dip of the black, and we're going to very carefully go around the outside. This is going to still be wet, as you can see. So very, very carefully. If you wanted to wait and let it dry all the way, you absolutely could. If you wanted to take a fan and just start letting it dry, you could do it that way as well. I'm going to go ahead and start painting just so you guys can see um, how to make the shape of the cassette that we have here in the sample, if that's the one you're creating. So we're just going to go along the top edge with just a nice straight line around all of the edges. Essentially, we're just doing a border. I know it may be a little hard to see. We're just going to do a border in that darker color. you see that? And I'm just going around all of the edges, just the top of it. You absolutely can blow. You can use a little piece of paper and fan it that way. If you have a, a fan, you can always set it by it. I like to just use my hand as a fan. It's the quickest for me. Okay, so we're just going along that top edge. Even if you choose not to do this cassette tape, if you wanted to do it one color, doing edges is always a really nice, a really nice look. So we have the edges. Let me see if I can show you guys a little bit closer. Just barely see that line. Now we're going to take a little more black. We're just going to make sure our brush is loaded. And we're going to come down and make this lip that's right here. So whether you consider that the top or the bottom, depending on how you like how familiar you are with cassettes. Sometimes this part is the bottom and it clips in, but sometimes this would be the top depending on how the words were on it. So it all depends on what it was. You absolutely can paint your circle one. I'm gonna add a symbol to mine here in a minute, but you absolutely can paint your circle one. But just for the painting purposes, so I can, what way I can see it, we are gonna do just a little, little lip. So you come down, going along the lip that you have already made and you are just going to do kind of a half rectangle to be able to create this look. And then we're going to connect it up here. I know the black is kind of hard to see on this dark red color. So I'll hold it up here in a second so you can see. That's the shape that we're creating, just kind of a, a little rectangle inside the big rectangle. 
And then we're gonna take, since this is our thinnest brush, we're gonna come back down to our yellow or whatever color you have right there in the middle. Hopefully it's dry enough now. And we're just gonna do two little circles along the outside. So a cassette tape has these circles and that would, and the inside of the circles that have these little notches and it would click it around and turn, turn it so it would play. Very retro. We're going to do our two circles. If you would rather fill them in, that's okay too. I'm just trying to do the outline as best I can. There we have it. A little cassette tape. I'm going to keep my black because I am going to do some black on my other one. So I'm going to keep that available. So How'd you do? What'd you paint? Did you do a cassette tape or you do something different? Let's just set that one aside. Move it up so you can see it a little bit more. Now we're gonna work on this one. Um, I am the worst lightning bolt painter in the entire universe. I did not paint this one. This is a good looking lightning bolt. I am terrible at it. Um, I've actually, um, there's another class on YouTube that you can watch where I already did this and you can see how terrible the lightning bolt painter is if you ever want to go and watch and get a little giggle. So I'm not going to be doing a lightning bolt today. Um, but if you wanted to do a lightning bolt and you wanted to practice, I can give you a little show of how we would do a lightning bolt. You can use the yellow and you can just go down. You want to make like a little triangle on top and it comes down kind of into a little V and then you're going to go up. This goes up into a nice point. That's not so terrible. You did both sides of the heart and it's perfect. I am. I am so glad that you got it. Look, I, I claim to be a terrible lightning bolt painter and look, that's not terrible. That is not a terrible lightning bolt. So if you wanna do the lightning bolt, that's how you can do it. I think to, for my piece, because this is mine and I wanna take it home, I think I might do a start. So I'm gonna go ahead and use black. You could use the yellow, you can do whatever, but because I already have black on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and use black. You watch my star be worse than my lightning bolt. I said that I was terrible at lightning bolts, but maybe I'm terrible at stars. But I'm just going to do a little star. What shapes are you guys painting? Are you doing solid colors? I don't know what you're doing. Hearts. Polka dots. A banana. That is amazing. I love that idea. So let's finish our song. I'm just going to do an outline for now. Look at that. And we're going to come back and we're just going to fill it in. I should have done maybe dark purple or something on top of this. It would have been really, really pretty with the orange and the yellow, a dark purple color. <laughs> I have had a lot of practice with stars. You could also, you can always, if you're gonna fill it in, you could always do a star like this and do one triangle and then you can cross over 
This is why scratch paper is good. You can always do it like this. And then fill it in that way too. That helps you get a nice star. So it's just like a top of a triangle. And then you're just going to connect, connect, connect. You could always do it like that if you don't want to freehand a star and if you are wanting to do a star. Do not have to. You can get creative. So we're just filling in. Ooh, the shape of an eye. I love that. I love how creative all of you are. So there's my star in the middle of my dish. I'm done with this. So I'm gonna put it into my water cup to make sure it gets nice and clean. So we have our examples here and then we have our finished dishes. Of course, they are going to need to dry. Um, if you do paint something all the way and you have it on your scratch paper and it sticks, that's okay. Just cut around the bottom of it and then you'll have a nice firm bottom. This one had paper on the bottom and it did stick, so it just stayed there. Um, that is not a big deal at all. Feel free after this one's up on YouTube if you want to keep watching and learn how to do things over and over and over again. Um, but we um, are done with this. So um, I hope you had so much fun today. We have more Camp Creatology. We are just in week two and we have four weeks. So um, the rest of this week, we actually have one on Wednesday that you can come and make a door hanger to hang on your door. So we're going to make a door hanger. You're very welcome. And then we have one on Friday where you can come and we're actually going to use some watercolors and we're going to paint with salt. So just make sure you have your salt ready and your glue ready. And we're going to do a roller skating painting with salt. And then we have two more weeks after that. This is my last video. So this will be the last time that you see me um, this go around, but we have some really great instructors. They're going to be here showing you. Um, but I have had such a blast with you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And we hope you have so much fun creating and we'll see you next time at Camp Creatology. Bye y'all.